How's it going, y'all? It's Gregor. Welcome to my video case for an Israeli CTU to be added to Rainbow Six Siege. So Israel is a country that, in my humble opinion, deserves a place in the game when one considers a thing or two about how Team Rainbow exists in terms of the original lore written by Tom Clancy himself in 1998 with the original book. Of the four country flags you see on the cover of the book, one of them is Israel. Why is that? Well, from the Rainbow Six Wiki, Team Rainbow is, quote, a multinational special operations task force operating under NATO supervision. Operatives are recruited from the world's leading counterterrorism and special forces units, including Delta Force, GSG-9, Spetsnaz, and many others. Israel's addition to the game would be particularly relevant and, in my eyes, warranted because of the unique nature in which the country exists. Israel, as it has existed since the closing of the Second World War, has fought in 15 separate wars and large-scale military operations. Now, of course the politics of those conflicts are widely polarizing, but there's one thing that no one can deny, and that is that Israel is a hot seat, and it relies heavily on a strong national defense to combat organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas. Simply put, Israel and counterterrorism, i.e. what this game is about, have a long history. So naturally, given Israel's history on the world stage, it's understandable that some of Rainbow's members would be from Israel, including Eliza Cohen, Ash. Despite being a part of the FBI SWAT in-game, Ash actually served with a special Israeli Air Force unit, Shaldag, in English, Kingfisher. Shaldag is responsible for covertly deploying into hostile environments to perform reconnaissance, and establish bases of operations while also shooting up bad guys if the opportunity arises. This unit's no joke. Their training regime is 20 months long, among the longest among Israel's armed forces. Shadag operatives undergo training in advanced infantry practice, parachuting, counterterrorism, all weather, all terrain navigation, air to ground cooperation, intelligence gathering, and reconnaissance. Shaldag is a seasoned unit of operatives that have been carrying out missions since Operation Latani in 1978. In recent memory, they've been heavily involved in counterterrorism ops against Hamas during fighting in Gaza. I think it's only natural that this nation gets added to the game in a form similar, eventually. But since we already have our Year 2 DLC confirmed, it would have to come afterwards. What would we get out of it then, I wonder? Let's talk about equipment first. Naturally, since the Israeli government is good at keeping secrets, it's a little bit difficult to find extensive info on this unit. But from the little bit of research material I could find, they're quote, regularly outfitted with M16 or M4A1 assault rifles with the M203 grenade launcher, or an FPS Gamerese, the noob tube, attached. Sidearms include the Sig Sauer or Glock 9mm series. I don't think this information limits weapon options, though, and I think that the inclusion of an Israeli CTU would warrant the inclusion of iconic Israeli small arms. Israel also makes their own gun optics, and their introduction to Siege would give rationale to add unique sights to the game, much like how the Russian Spetsnaz have their own. For instance, the ITL Mars, produced by the ITL Optronics Company based in Israel, for usage with the Tavor Tar-21 assault rifle. For an attacker, I wouldn't rule out the M16 or M4 style derivatives, but I would also include the very well-known Galil platform of assault rifles. In-game, you'd probably see the more modernized Galil Ace. The Galil was based off of a Finnish adaptation of the Kalashnikov platform, the RK-62. Fighting against armies using the AK-47, the Israelis were impressed by how rugged the thing was. The idea was to make a gun that had the reliability and sturdiness of an AK that could fire with the precision of an M16, firing NATO standard 5.56, so it's a smaller round and a little bit easier to control. I imagine it'd be pretty similar to Fuse's AK-12, a small AR cartridge with middling rate of fire and controllability. More importantly than any of that, though, is the fact that it has a bottle opener. Just throwing air of the nice call briske shooting some tires, brah. I imagine it'd be pretty similar to Fuse's AK-12, a small AR cartridge with middling rate of fire and controllability. Or the TAR-21, a bullpup assault rifle that uses a long stroke piston mechanism like the AK-47. 5.56 five, rounds, and very similar rate of fire and handling to oh, IQ's AUG. Tag. Both the Galil and TAR are built in carbine variants and could make the unique appearance as weapons for a defender. The Tavor in particular is a very modern weapon, and its reputation has been well earned, edging out the AR platform rifles that the IDF had in service for a long time. It even got the 2014 so-called Golden Bullseye Award 
from the American National Rifle Association as its Rifle of the Year. And I don't know if my audience knows much about the NRA, but they really, really like guns. So they might be onto something there. That's it for attacker rifle options, but I think a definite for an Israeli defender would be the Uzi. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, not that Uzi. This Uzi. One of the most recognizable weapons in the world. It's been used by servicemen and mobster alike. This design was one of the first to make usage of a telescoping bolt, which allows the magazine to be housed in the pistol grip handle of the weapon, so this allows for a shorter gun. It was a staple of the idea for a good few decades, favored by rear echelon troops, tankers, and officers, but has since been replaced by the Micro Tavor, which is a very small, compact version of the Tar-21 that I mentioned earlier. It's more like a carbine. I think that if Israeli operators were added to the game, the Defender would either use the Micro Tavor or the Uzi. As for the modernity of the guns, we have an operator who uses a World War II era submachine gun, so I don't think it's something to get too worked up about. Not to mention these are tier 1 operatives and I imagine they get to pick their own equipment anyway. Other options for attackers could include the Negev light machine gun, a relatively lesser known Israeli small arm, but recognizable and iconic nonetheless. Shotguns would probably consist of typical Mossberg and Remington models, but the IDF also uses the arm cell striker for riot control. This is a very unique weapon that you might recognize from COD Modern Warfare 2. It's a 12 gauge shotgun that fires out of a big rotating cylinder. 12 rounds, semi-automatic. Now, it's not like we don't have enough defenders with semi-automatic shotguns, but I like to think that maybe by year three, the game meta would be a little bit more diverse. I don't know. The SIGs or Glocks mentioned earlier would work, but I'd put in the Jericho 941, the Baby Eagle. Named such by Magnum Research, responsible for the wildly less practical Desert Eagle. But don't get it twisted, this gun is designed and produced by IMI themselves. And it's based off of the very popular CZ-75, one of the original Wonder Nines. So what about gadgets? Unique abilities that these operators would have? Well, um... We, we, we still have another year worth of content to go, so I honestly don't don't really know. But I have a couple ideas. I'd like them to be thematically appropriate, as in something that makes sense, something that this unit would use. For instance, the GIGN theme is about... And the Spetsnaz theme mainly involves killing shit. But what about Israel? Well, you remember that Discovery show with the tactical melon head? Turns out the thing was made in Israel. This is the corner shot, designed for, quote, for SWAT teams and special forces in hostile situations, usually involving terrorists and hostages. Sounds good to me. The camera comes in different modes and fires pistol caliber rounds. Obviously, if you got headshots, that wouldn't matter. For a tactical shooter, I can see how this could be interpreted as a little bit overpowered, but when you think about it, it's a pretty large frame, and it could easily be shot back at and destroyed, one and done, and then the player has to rely on their base kit. Equipment could include stun grenades, and I think two armor and two speed would be reasonable. Obviously, I think this would be suited as an attacker's gadget, because it is built for people going into buildings. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. For defenders, I think options are a little bit limited in terms of inspiration I can draw from the Israeli armed forces themselves. I think at that point it's ultimately up to the devs. I do feel there is a significant lack of trapper operators. Maybe the defender could lay down a mine that reveals the enemy to teammates for a couple seconds. I'm not a game balance expert and I have no idea if this is something that would actually work, but it is just an idea. In short, Israel is a nation that I think needs a little love by Ubisoft. We're playing a game about terrorists, and Israel is a very polarizing nation, very much to how its armed forces deal with them. Plus, there exists a strong foundation in the game lore for its existence as a faction. Anyway, I hope this video gives you all a little idea of the kinds of nations we could be seeing eventually added to the game way down the line, but for now we have Hong Kong, Poland, and South Korea to look forward to assuming the latter doesn't get nuked by King Doey the Third. It'd be kind of awkward if World War III started by the time we got to them, huh? Anyway guys, if you like this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up, share it with your friends. It really does go a long way. Subscribe for more content like this, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Links in the description. What do you think of the ideas I mentioned for gadgets and stuff like that? Check out the Twitter poll I made. Stick around for more Rainbow Six, and I'll see you all starside. Take care.